Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Space 2. Uh, we're going to be starting a new game as the Vodyani today. People had a lot of suggestions in the uh, the comments of the last episode. In particular, it seemed like a lot of people wanted to see um, Hisho and United Empire and Umbral Choir, and you know what? We'll get there. Um, in particular, there was a lot of people who were like, let's let's try United Empire. Um, I think partially based on the thing I mentioned about their faction quest having a branch where their, like, their faction as a whole changes, and that's pretty cool, but a United Empire game is very influence-based, and so I worried that it might be a little too similar to the ones we just played. We'll do them soon, though, maybe next. Uh, for right now, I want to try out the, I want to do the Vidyani. We haven't played the Vidyani in a long time. They're very weird, and their playstyle should feel quite different from the thing we just did. So, the core mechanic of the Vidyani is that they are shipbound. But Yanni populations live on great arcs and colonize systems in what you might describe as a unique way. A Vodyani would never set foot on a planet for any reason other than... Uh, well, hold on, we'll get to it. Um, but, uh, so we, we live in these great arcs. You can see that ship hull to the left there. The arc goes to a system and anchors on the system, and then our Vodyani population can exploit all the planets in that system that we have the technology for simultaneously. It means we have a very, very small number of population units in our empire. We'll have one point of population for a considerable amount of time at the beginning of the game. Um, but it also means that when we no longer want a particular system, we can just uproot the Ark and float somewhere else. And all of the buildings that we build are built in the Ark rather than on the planet. So we just kind of like scoop our whole society up and fly off into the stars, which is pretty cool. Uh, we use... Essence, that's what the Ankh is, uh, to generate population and create the arcs, and Essence Management is going to be a big, big part of our early game. Our core population unit is the Vodyani. You notice this is a very good population unit. Uh, four, four of everything except Essence, or of everything except Influence, rather. Four Fids, as we say. Uh, but... Having Vodyani in a system does dramatically reduce the food output of the system. It takes a long, long time to grow Vodyani through food. Fortunately, we do have other methods. Uh, we are fast travelers. All of our ships are fast. We are fearless warriors. Our infantry, no, not troop health, specifically infantry health, uh, is considerably higher. We have legendary heroes with lowered upkeep and bonus XP per turn. Uh, we get plus approval from modernizing our arcs, and modernization is a, it's a little weird. Uh, we're definitely going to be less invested in modernization resources that have a per-population point effect, because we're going to have such small populations. And we get to start with Xenobiology, which is a very good technology, and Off-World Agribusiness, which is totally fine. Uh, our, our initial government is a federation that's a two-party government, uh, it's not actually a great government for these guys, and we might see if we can swap over to something else. And then the religious political party in power, and we're probably going to end up with the religious party leading our government for the entirety of the game. The Vidyani are a very religious people, and due to some of our unusual mechanics, we will never have a non-Vodyani population point. So, let's, uh, let's get in here. I've turned down the size of the game a little bit. I, I moved us down to eight players and made the galaxy eight player sized. Uh, hopefully this will cut down on the slowdown in the late game and make the diplomatic situation a little bit more manageable. Uh, I considered leaving the galaxy larger, but I think competition for space is really important to some of the game's mechanics. Like you want to be uncomfortably pinched by your neighbors so as to generate more reasons for conflict and stuff, so I think this is fine. And with that, let us commit. This is going to be a weird game, and I'm just going <laughs> to let me prepare everybody right now for the moral shock of it. As you might be able to tell from this loading screen, we're not the good guys. Uh, every once in a while, we get to play a faction where, where we can reasonably imagine that we might be a positive force in the galaxy. I think with the Unfallen, you could argue that we were that thing. Uh, this is not going to be one of those games. There's going to be a lot of... There's going to be a lot of eating people, frankly. You know, it happens. We once had a home world. But we were poor caretakers. Had we not discovered the virtual relics, our tale would have ended there. By their grace, we were elevated. 
and we strive to serve their memory. Yet, in our moment of exaltation, a false prophet arose. The heretics summoned ancient demons and corrupted the faithful. But we refuse his lies and reject his accusations. We will see the heretic drown in his blasphemies. He will not break our will and bring ruin on our church. Only then can we shed our mortal cloth and rise. Endless. I really love everything about the presentation of Amplitude's games. All right, so we got ourselves a ring galaxy here. And, ooh, what a lucky position this is. Check this out. So we started in a system where we are able to immediately work three of the planets. That's absolutely awesome. So you can see our single point of population here is able to work each planet at the same time. Uh, the population cap on these planets is not actually a planet-based cap. It's the cap of the arc. The arc can only hold three points of population. Um, so we're going to have to work on that. The way we work on that is by uh, system development. As we increase the arc's development level, it'll get more pop slots. Uh, there are also some other things we can do with the arc. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's get uh, drone networks in here. Obviously, that's pretty good. And then public-private partnerships is actually phenomenal in this system. We started with three planets, two of which are fertile and one of which is temperate. This is just like a huge amount of science. That said, pretty good odds we're not actually going to finish this right away because the first thing we research is going to be xenolinguistics because look at how good xenoindustrial infrastructure is going to be in this system. That's awesome. So yeah, we'll spend four turns. I'm not even going to put this in the queue. Um, we'll spend four turns researching this, building the drone networks when the drone networks are finished we jam on the Xeno Industrial Infrastructure, and then we'll get public-private partnerships out immediately after that. But I don't want to have it in the queue, because I want any industry rollover from uh, the drone network completion to go toward uh, the infrastructure building. Once we have that, we are going to be in great, great shape. And we have a couple of curiosities to search here. I mean, you know how this thing goes. We're going to do the same thing here that we usually do. Let's start by looking at our ship design. Uh, so as you can see, we have really cool looking ships. <laughs> I've, I really, really like the appearance of the Vidyani stuff. Um, you'll notice that this ship does not start with an engine module. And yet, still has five movement. Uh, because, of course, it is very fast. And then we have the, um, the faster ship's racial trait. So this ship chassis has a base five movement. Uh, what it has instead of an engine is an essence drawing module. It absorbs food from the system that the uh, the ship is is orbiting and turns it into, well, turns that and also some uh, some part of the population into essence. And then we will use that essence to speed up our population growth or to build new arcs. Primarily to build new arcs at first. This uh, the essence drawing module also lets you absorb essence from destroyed enemy ships. So each, each command point of enemy ships gives us an essence. Uh, that's pretty significant, but honestly, I don't know that we want this on our scout. So we're gonna we're gonna snap our hero in here. Farb Varb Saint Zuina. Zuina. And then what's the deal with your ship? Let's have a look. So you have a five movement ship already. Yeah, my inclination here is to well, I'm a little torn, actually, because we could put another engine in here and then replace the essence module in our scout with an engine and just have a faster scouting fleet. Or we could do just a probe here and have more probes available. Not really sure what the right move is. I guess we'll do it like this. We'll hope that the lost speed doesn't matter as much as the extra probes. And all of these slots are single purpose. Is that the case? 
Yes, they are. Okay. Well, I think this is fine. We'll just leave this, the initial scout as it is, and we're going to start by exploring these. Let's get that, get that quick and easy XP. And what have we discovered? Well, we found a laser design. It's actually got pretty good DPS for a really early game weapon. And we found a titanium deposit, which means that when we finish Xeno Linguistics in four turns, we'll be immediately mining titanium. This is, this is a very promising start. We also started with two of these leechers. So these ships have multiple essence drawing modules, no weapons, and their entire purpose is just to go forth and bring us the soup. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna party like Danic Jericho tonight. So let's get out here and find some people, and uh, just say howdy to them, to their insides mostly. All right. We very often go cram exam act in the early game, it's a little bit less good with the Vodiani than it has been with the other factions because of the fact that we only have one point of population. Um, Species Stability Act, there's a special version of it just for the Vodiani that causes it to give essence instead of, um, instead of dust, which it usually does. We are going to run this, but we have to have five influence before we can. So next turn, we'll start this up. For right now, let's just get three extra science. Right? That's, yeah, that's a significant amount, kind of. Kind of, sort of. Adoration to the Saints Hierarch. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games with uh, with the space techno monsters. The, uh, the techno-religious monsters. So you can see here, this is our essence. We're only bringing in 10 per turn. Uh, we currently have one arc. If we would like to build another arc, it takes almost no, it takes actually no production. It is si simply a single turn, but it will cost us 600 essence. After we build this arc, it will expand our maximum essence capacity, but also the essence necessary for the next arc will be considerably higher. I think I think it just doubles, or it goes up by 600 every time. Um, so, as you can tell, we're going to need some real sources of essence. Uh, one other thing we can do is we can go and fiddle with the arc design. So this is what an arc looks like at the moment. Very simple missile weapons. It is possible for enemy uh, factions to show up and just kill the arc. It's a, it's a lot easier to disrupt a Vodiani system than it is with a lot of other factions. Uh, fortunately, as we develop the arcs, they'll, as we develop our get our system developments and stuff, we'll gain more slots, we'll become better fighters. Uh, right now the arc is running a couple of interesting support modules. So you can see here... There's one for each resource, basically, that just causes them to produce extra of that thing. I think it probably is not going to blow anybody's mind when I suggest that we maybe want to just jam as many of the, these essence modules in here as we possibly can. We don't even really need an engine on this thing. I think let's do that for right now. Now, the bad news is that's going to be a fairly expensive retrofit. 390. Uh, but remember, in the early game, you get a lot of dust from quests and stuff. We're going to try to get to this point as quickly as we can. So with that, I think we are actually done for the turn. We set up our government. Yeah, that's all the first turn stuff. Let's hope that the, uh, the leeches discover some people quickly. All right, well, we've discovered the system Heka with the planet Psychagoja in it. A lushly forested world, once a major center of the Endless. Center of both medical research and of entertainment, for it was here that the Hisha were built and modified to become gladiators, etc. Um, that's a pretty good planet. It's a pretty, pretty good planet. And it's really nice to have found it so close. So we could pick up, and I think in a lot of cases I would, pick up our initial arc and fly it over to the Unique, because that's, like, boy, what an opportunity. But our starting situation on Gemini is so good that I don't think that's right to do. We definitely do want to fly the hero fleet over to one of these things. I guess we'll go to Hekka because there are two star lanes coming off of it, so make it a little easier to scout this way. I will say that if we do not discover any minor factions in the pretty near future, our growth is going to feel a little bit stunted. Because obviously, uh, it would be nice if we had some, some living things to... Uh, to accelerate our growth off of. So what have we here? Uh, the signal, atmospheric, and signal. All right, let's start with these. As ever, leaving the atmospherics just in case the uh, just 
just in case the initial academy quest wants to pop early. There's no reason to take those. Let's have a look at our hero. So our hero has base plus 10 influence and plus 5% damage on fleet. The Vodiani skills uh, give plus food. Of course, there's a massive food, uh, food reduction from system on our population. So this is not quite as good as it looks, but still, you know, food is good. Uh, mantle production gives just shield capacity on his personal ship. Plus energy weapon damage on the entire fleet, and there's two skill points available there. Uh, percentage dust increase, massive movement speed increase, and a capstone skill that is pretty good for fleets. But they also have this skill, Infallible Authority, which obviously is very good on systems. So... It's, it, Vodiani heroes are not as clearly one thing or the other as a lot of other factions heroes are. You really can use them for both. This one, our initial hero here, uh, is a guardian and so has like Battlefield Grandmaster and post-relativistic targeting. It really makes me want to use Varb Saint Zuina, Zuina as, a, uh, as a commander. So we might... I'm debating whether we want to even pull back to the system. We have two hot worlds, right? And we have one hot world. Yeah, you know what? This is... Efficiency aficionado is actually going to be pretty good here. Probably what's going to happen with Varb is Varb will be a, a fleet commander for a little while at the beginning of the game, then a governor for a while, then go back to commanding ships later. I think, I think having that Having that early governor in place is probably too good to too good to pass up. All right. So you'll notice we're not actually gaining ten essence per turn here. There is a small amount of essence that goes into the creation of manpower for the empire. We are below our manpower cap, so we'll always be feeding some of that. Okay, we found some miners. Cool. Let's have a look at them. The Haroshems. So they're space dietitians, minus 10% food consumption on systems. Okay, not totally great. This is not a trait that helps us very much. So we have a um, we have an unusual situation with the minor factions. We will not allow anyone who is not a Vodyani to live on the Ark. And frankly, the Haroshems, they just couldn't do what needs doing anyway. So we can kind of sort of assimilate them. We can induct them into the church and convert them to the religion that has us at the top of it as deities, but we'll never be able to actually own their system in the same way that other factions can with the with the direct assimilation. We definitely do want to um, we do want to get their uh, their opinion of us up though. So I'd love to do some praising. We'll do some uh, scouting of their anomalies and stuff. This matters, but it's going to be a little bit of a strained relationship. Okay, and we discovered this system has multiple moons. Also, there's 150 dust in there, which is actually extremely relevant right now. So we're going to start our relationship with these guys by harvesting them. We're just going to harvest this vi the vital energy from this system. We're going to talk about this in a very oblique way, but you'll notice over time as we do this, the population on the planet will go on the system will go down. So not terribly hard to figure out what's going on there. Uh, they do not like this. You may have noticed that we were plus one relation per turn with them uh, prior to starting this. Uh, obviously, the harvesting creates a pretty significant negative uh, negative attention pressure, but we're going to do it until we are in position to start boosting their opinion of us. Then we'll stop. For the moment, I'm just stockpiling essence because we're going to need a bunch of it, right? Uh, now, in addition to using it to build an arc, we can also use it to just create a point of population. And there's an argument to be made, especially in this situation, where this is effectively three points of population, that we should maybe use uh, use our essence for this before the creation of a new arc. Um, the creation of a new arc comes with one additional population for free. Uh, I think we're probably going to go for the arc first, just because the arc is going to have room for a bunch more essence modules in it, and that's how we get our positive feedback loop going, but... A point of population is certainly a lot of resources. Like there are good reasons to do that thing. All right, you guys are headed this way. Oh, right, we have a hacking operation available. We can hack this minor faction. I totally 
I totally forget that that's even a thing you can do. That's actually going to help a lot with the uh, increasing our our public relations with them. We, you know, we need a little bit of an image work over after all of the devouring. Brother Atab was caught gorging on the slaves today. He shall be forbidden sustenance for three days, his suit receptors deactivated. All must obey the laws. It is a great and lonely thing to rule the Vodyani Protectorate, a heavy responsibility that I wear with pride. We have but our faith and our suits, our cloth, which protects and maintains our spirits during our holy efforts, to guide the faithful, discipline those who stray, and punish those who preach heresy. And of all those heretics who must be punished, Is Yander Shemed, the infidel, is the greatest. He is also my brother, he who fomented a rebellion, freed the slaves, stole a ship, and crippled the protectorate for decades. This music is really inappropriate to the tone that I am trying to establish. <laughs> he who discovered the tabernacle of lies and believed every word of it. The day will come when all deeds are counted and tallied in the great network that binds us together, and on that day the infidel will burn, even if it must be by my own hand, even if he is my brother. But that day is not yet come, and by their will I hope it does not come soon, for we have much to prepare, a system to pacify, a new galaxy to civilize, the ignorant to convert, the infidel to punish. The rigors of faith permit us no rest. My faith burns with the flame of a thousand suns, and no power in the galaxy will deter me. Uh, the Prestors and Custos will see to the faithful. I must look outward to secure our new home. There are the, uh, Those who are here must come to accept us and learn our ways. Our first step is to deal with those who cannot understand reason, history, and the laws. They are pirates, and shall be dealt with as will all brigands and unbelievers. Through destruction. Uh, we are going to shoot them. Uh, so, game just spawned a couple of pirate fleets on us. Not totally ideal. Also, somebody completed a legendary deed already. Got their dust production up to 100. That's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, the AI gets to start with some advantages on account of it being endless difficulty. So, I think it maybe behooves us to grab efficient shielding. Start getting some, uh, some military ships out there. But it is worth noting that the arcs can be used to fight, right? They, they don't have a lot of weapon slots or defense slots, but they do have just a huge amount of health. I think we're still going to get efficient shielding. We want to have the ability to, uh, quote-unquote, defend ourselves. We're sort of going to aggressively, project projectively defend ourselves. Uh, but we can use the arcs to fight off pirates in a pinch. You guys get over there. Oh, hey, you know what we should do is probably that thing. That thing I was talking about where we run the Species Stability Act. That's a that's a thing that could have started earlier. All right, so it looks like probably next turn we'll stop siphoning here. And we need to build our Xeno Industrial Infrastructure. Four turns until we are, all of a sudden, tremendously productive. Yeah, I like this start a lot. I think we're in a we're in a good spot here. Did I remember? Hold on, we gotta take a quick look at the arc design. Is the arc design okay? All of the combat slots are full. We should probably. Do we want to just switch to slugs? I don't much like using missile weapons, especially in the early game, because a lot of pirate vessels have basic um, bullet projectiles, and so your missiles just get incidentally shot down a lot. Um, so we could go for the lasers with the critical hit chance. Keep in mind, the, the DPS that is, uh, that is observed there does not contain the critical hit chance, so actual observed DPS will be a little bit higher. Bullet weapons give us defense against enemy missiles, but also they are never at 100% effectiveness against enemy ships. I think we'll, we'll install the lasers. And then we'll also jam some energy shields in there. Okay, that slot is only defensive. There we go. Uh, there's no industry cost. It, like Upgrading an arc, creating an arc is always just a single turn of building, so it makes sense to make sure all of the slots are full. Somewhere we discovered the unfallen. And of harmony. 
The unfallen greet you. Okay, all the way over here. I'm going to have this uh, this ship continue to scout in this direction. There's definitely, like, if we pulled it back, we could obviously uh, siphon life a little bit more effectively, but I want to know where the unfallen are. I want eyes on those trees immediately. So we're producing, <clears throat> excuse me, producing 65 essence per turn here. It's going to change in a moment. Because we're going to stop harvesting here. And we're going to try to make friends. Listen, it was all a big misunderstanding. Did we lower? Okay, we did not lower their population. Um, the praise is a little bit more expensive than I would like. So I guess we're going to, we're going to do one more turn of siphoning. Because I really do, uh. Really do want that essence. And then next turn, <clears throat> we will praise them. So you'll notice the, the, the cost of the praise, co the cost of praise is based on the number of positive influence or positive relationship modifiers you currently have. Right now, we have none because we're siphoning off of them. Um, so the cost would be 10. However, if we cancel the siphon, we will get plus one influence per turn because they are temperate and reasonable and we met them first and everything. So. Um, that the existence of that plus one influence per or that plus one relationship return drives the cost of praise up to 25. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot just pay the 10 right now because you cannot praise them while leeching them. Some real mixed signals there. So we'll just wait a turn until we have the 25 and bank some stuff for the moment here. And we definitely want to praise them before searching that curiosity for that same reason that the the curiosity searching the curiosity will create a uh, a positive relationship effect which will raise the cost of praising all right so praise and then do this thing okay and the the behemoth quest has started so 19 technologies must be unlocked people will will get to that we discovered seismic activity. Not totally awesome. And also 5 XP for our ships, which is cool. That's fine. Alright, so we now have plus 4 uh, relation per turn going on. Plus 1 from the curiosity. Plus 1 from their natural temperate nature. Plus 2 from the praise. And when the hack completes in 3 turns, we'll layer some more on there. And that means that we should not harvest from them anymore for a moment. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether this is the right path to take. But if we get them, uh, if we get them to like us enough that they offer that we can assist them with a quest, and then we actually do the quest, they'll be converted to our religion and they will tie the essence to us naturally. It might be the case that it's better to just um, to just harvest as fast as you can from them in the early game to get that second arc going right away. I'm not really certain what the right play is, but we're gonna we're gonna do it this way for now. We're going to try making friends. And so we'll just scout with the rest of our ships while we while we wait for all that to work. Hmm. Do I want to just bring this leecher back? No, I, I, I want to find more minor civilizations if I can. This leecher might just stay out there and, uh, and harvest soup. So at the current rate, it's going to take quite a while. Ooh. Wow, did we really find another unique... The Endless Society developed here on Tor, orbiting a star they called Prime. Though it is the birthplace of this culture that dominated the galaxy for centuries, they were forced to depart when over-exploitation destabilized the core and crust. Okay, well that's a shame. Um, so that is also inhabitable. And, like, completely wild. With any other faction, this would be a huge deal. For us, it's only a very big deal. Because obviously we can't take... Uh, we can't quite take full advantage of the planets, given our population mechanics. So we have revealed the nodes linked to Nos, and also... We discovered a dust load on this planet, and a battle tactic that we will hopefully not have to use. And this is the turn, yep... Reassignment cooldown is up. I think this is a good moment to uh, to pull Varb back. We're about to finish 
some buildings in real quick succession here. We could use the extra industry and also, honestly, the extra influence. The 10 influence per turn does matter. Uh, so there's not actually anything else to leech over here. And we can't really take the leecher back safely because we have pirates in the way. So I guess you're headed to Nakos and you're going back to Lanaka and just resist the urge to extend the straw. I like to imagine that the leech module is just a big straw that comes down from space. Uh, yeah, I guess we're just doing this this way. Ah, a vine ship. Okay, so we, we have some information here. The Unfallen are very nearby and are extending their vine network into this system. We're going to just pick a direction and see where they're coming from. Uh, we will be able to see the vines reach out toward Takim as it gets closer to completion, but with only one vine ship, as we now know, thanks to last game, that's going to take a while. Boy, I sure hope these guys give us an easy assimilation quest. The more I look at this, the more I think that maybe, maybe the right path was to just siphon off of them until we get the second arc up and then try to assimilate them afterward. The thing is, once they're uh, once they're willingly tithing essence to us, we'll actually be we'll be making more essence per turn off of them than we could have with just the leeches, because we will also be allowed to leech them, um, and. I want to get that greater amount of essence coming in as quickly as possible, but yeah, I'm, I might be making the wrong move here. So we know that this is the Unfallen home system. I'm going to turn around and go back this way. This is far away from whatever the Unfallen are doing, and I'm hoping there's a minor faction out here that we can uh, that we can siphon off of for a while. Oh, right. Here's a downside of having redesigned the arc. I made the retrofit more expensive. Let's undo this. What did it... It had this thing. 466. Did that... That got more expensive, right? Oh, right. I'm looking at that, the, the design of that arc. I was like, why can't I edit this? But, yeah. 466, huh? We could strip off the plating... I just really want to I want to get this thing upgraded with the new modules 404. All right, well, I guess we'll be able to get there. Unfortunately, for the moment, 404 is a real money not found situation. But our system is developing rapidly. We'll go ahead and improve our image here. So that's 5 points per turn. Yes, five points per turn. Okay, so we'll be um, we'll be getting resources from them very soon, and hopefully we'll be able to follow up with a an assimilation shortly after. I am going to rehack them. Just reapply that effect as soon as it ends, or almost as soon as it ends, because I, I believe it's only five turns in length. Yeah. And we really need those uh, those combat ships. We need to be able to deal with these pirates. Uh, I guess just sleep for now. I don't really need to do anything. Hey, how about I remember to do the things? There we go. Okay, so that's going to help our essence quite a bit. A pirate base has spawned. At least it's on the right side. Oh, no, another one spawned over here. I was going to say, if one had spawned over here, that would be really annoying. But good news, me. Uh, so... We're going to have to develop a combat fleet, like, right away. It's a little bit of a shame. Life form and subterranean. So we have some red sang, we have some more hyperium, and we've also discovered a psychotropic atmosphere that lets you see the future. So plus vision range is how seeing the future is, is uh, represented. And we have, we've finished all of the important stuff here just as we got the design for our new ships. So let's have a look at those. We've gained access to the Gouge. So there's a lot of similarities between the basic ship chassis from faction to faction, but they're not quite the same. Uh, you can see we have here two weapon slots, 
one utility slot, two defense slots, and then a combined utility defense slot. So this thing is actually fairly versatile. And then our, uh, our more defensive small ship chassis has an awful lot of defensive slots. One of them is also a support slot. So we could fit uh, draw essence modules in, which makes sense even when we're creating combat ships, because remember we can feed off the essence of our uh, of our defeated foes. I think we're probably going to start by just building some gouges. So which weapons do we want to use for the gouges? I do, I do kind of like the laser weapons. They don't give us that free missile defense, but I think they're still good. And then let's... Let's put some draw essence modules on there. Oh, those are very expensive, though. So you can see, like, the cost of a normal module is, like, 30 industry, or maybe maybe even less than that. The draw essence module is 120 industry, so that is going to increase our build times pretty significantly, but it's also going to mean that all of, our, all of our combat fleets are economic fleets, effectively, and I do like that idea. Hold on, let's apply this design. We can see some of those pirate ships, right? No, we cannot currently. We used to be able to. So I don't know what kind of weapons they're packing. I guess we'll just, um... We'll split our defenses for the moment. Okay, how long does it take to build one of those? Three turns with the, uh... With the... With the thing in it. That's a little bit of a shame, but I think it's worth building them that way. We'll just make a couple of those, and hopefully hopefully the pirates will not go anywhere or disturb our ships in any way until we're done. So, if we research one more thing in this tier, we'll get an extra loss slot, which might be useful. And, like, adaptive bureaucracies is totally okay. Xenology is not that impressive for us. We have no planetary specializations. So the reason you usually pick up Xenology is that it has um, it has the plus influence specialization attached to it. That said, um, getting new heroes faster is actually probably a good thing. We are probably not going to have the kind of money we had last game, so buying new heroes all the time is maybe not on the table. It would take us two turns to get through Xenology. Well, we're not going to build this structure right away anyway. It's not like we would start working on this in two turns because we're very, very busy with all of our... Uh, other stuff we have going on. So I guess we probably want to improve our industry output or our science output. We could grab plasma metallurgy, start mining out the Hyperium. Interplanetary transport network is actually quite good for us. I think, I'm actually not a hundred percent sure how these effects are applied. I assume they, I assume they work the way you would think they work where we will get plus three industry per population point that is effectively working a planet, even uh, a planet with a strategic deposit, even though our guys are never actually on the planets. So yeah, let's grab that. And then do we want some science stuff right away? What's the one planet in Gemini that we are not able to work yet? It's an Arctic. So Arctic is here, right? No, that's ice. This is Arctic. So eukaryotic sap does make a lot of sense. It leads us to some important places. Pub scale accelerators will give us access to some better modules for our um, for our arcs. There's a lot of arc modules sort of scattered throughout the science area. We probably care we care about science a lot this game. So I guess let's grab this to lower the cost of these. This will be our, our short-term focus, improved science and, uh, and settling technology. And you have one more thing to search, okay. And then we'll probably want to pick up some, uh, some new military modules at some point in the near future. And obviously the, um... Okay, we're cordial with them, that's cool. Obviously, the development of our uh, our system our system development t our tax increasing the level of our arcs that's the idea I'm trying to express is pretty important too. We just have a lot of concerns, a lot of things all at once. But science is going to help us burn through all of those a little faster. What is Lyra? Hmm. 
It says it's been colonized by another empire, but there shouldn't be a player whose color is white. Yeah, I did not set up a white... Hmm, maybe this is some... Something related to somebody's faction quest or something. Sometimes, um... Sometimes the faction quests do that. They will spawn, um... Like, little minor empires that you have to deal with. Where are we at on Wormhole Tech? Is, is Wormhole... No, that's Warp Drive. Wormholes are up here. Okay. This is probably important, because it looks like the little tiny baby constellation we're on, um doesn't have a lot of good uh, minor factions on it, although it does have a plus science bonus. That would be useful. We're going to have to fight the Unfallen for it. They are definitely able to expand more quickly than we are. So in two turns we'll be able to build our new arc. We will absolutely stop production on the military ships to jam that through. Run. Pirate ship showed up. Our basic scout design is actually not terrible at combat. 170 native defense with 1500 health. We could probably fight a pirate ship with this thing, and fighting a pirate ship would give us a, uh, some essence, because the scout does have that essence module. We discovered a Garden of Eden. Okay, that seems pretty cool. Also a great big load of essence, which is fine. Fine, not great. Wait, what are the two planets we can't... Uh, work on here, Ash and Lava. Okay, those are, <clears throat> unfortunately, those are not currently in our research queue. I'm going to send the scout up here. So, in two turns, before the hack even wears off, in two turns, we'll be able to go for the assist on this. I am pretty happy with our position. Neutrals can now hack and stuff. I think the pirate ship is in this star lane? Yeah, it's chasing us. Okay. Well, we're going to have just both of our ships gather up at Lanika then. We will fight together. Do stay gouge. One thing I didn't actually look at is the movement speed of this ship. How fast is a gouge? Six? Okay, six is fine. So we now have the interest and sovereignty of the Harashems on Lanaka. Let's assist. Also, oh, the rumor, the, the Academy quest started. That's a shame, because we just searched an, an atmospheric curiosity last turn. For years, isolated settlements of the Harashems have suffered at the hands of a predatory band operating out of the Kazinka Cleft. They are not without a sense of humor, though. Ah, yes, these are the, the pirates that put on dinner theater. Destroy the mercenary fleet... Somewhere in a nearby system. Well, bad news for those mercenaries. I was already constructing a military. Okay, so let's go back into our arc and edit this thing into what we actually want it to be. These modules are effectively free. It only has three movement if we don't install an engine, but it's not going very far, right? Like, we're probably... We're, we're only taking this one to Hekka. I mean, Nakos would be better. Maybe we do want to temporarily have an engine. Pull one of these for right now and then retrofit it later. Yeah, six movement, so if it's traveling with the um, with the gouges, it's not slowing the fleet down. That's fine. And that'll be a, that'll be a cheap retrofit, because we're only changing one um, we're only changing one module after the fact. Okay. So you can see that uh, population growth, the old-fashioned way through eating and birth, Pretty slow. Uh, we do also have, the, uh, have access to this, which allows us to turn dust into essence at a pretty poor rate. But it's worth noting, even though it doesn't say that it does anything to your industry, this does effectively reduce the system's industry to zero because it sits in the production queue and stops other things from being processed. So this is very expensive. I'm going to do this. We'll, we'll have two gouges accompany the Ark, we'll blow up a bunch of pirates, and then we'll, uh, we'll build more ships later. And for the moment, they're providing us with some dust and some science, and it's like a pretty significant amount of science for this point in the game. Um, but they will not provide us with essence until we assimilate them. I'm gonna actually just fleet these two up. So you're good there for the moment. 
You guys should also catch the pirates if you can. You should, I guess, head through the Unfallen. We can continue scouting. Actually, do I want them in guard mode? Because I, I would, I would be okay with fighting the one random um, pirate ship that came from the pirate base. But I don't really want this fleet to get into a fight with the dinner theater pirates because they're, um, they're a little bit more numerous. I think they have three ships, so we couldn't, we couldn't take them with just the one gun that's on the wheel. And hey, would you look at that? Our latest political survey suggests that probably the religious party is going to win the election. Who would have thought? We're probably going to end up, like, religious militarist quite a bit. Which is fine. That works out okay for us. I guess for the moment we'll just hang out here? Is there anything that we could search while we're here? No, there is not. Yeah, we'll just slowly kill their manpower. Maybe that pirate ship will come back to try to drive us off and we will, we will blow it up. So, Optimal Operations Expert is... I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work. Is this going to give us one food in one industry because we have one population? Or three food in three industry because we effectively have three population on planets? Given the reduction in our food from our population type, I'm inclined to take this and we'll just test. I'm certain that I've tested this before, but I don't remember. So right now we're looking at 19,143. Actually, we can do this from this menu here. And it becomes 20,146. So weirdly, we got three industry but one food. Oh no, we got three food and it's being reduced by half because of our... Um... There we go. Because of our half. Okay, yeah. So actually, things that care about our, that give you a per population point bonus are fine in systems where you have a lot of colonizable planets. Good to know. We're definitely taking the second point of that then. And we now have this. Oh, right. A uh, an arc has an arc has five command or four command points. We can't actually merge all these together. Well, this should be more than sufficient to deal with this problem and. I guess you'll just stay here for the moment, since you can't even... No, he'll follow along. Because we're going to anchor that uh, that arc once we get over here, and then I want to have two ships together to continue fighting pirates. So we'll build this quickly, and then we'll continue building ships, and I'm, uh, yeah, feeling pretty good about it. So we're definitely just saving up for another arc. The second arc is 1,400 essence, so it is not just plus 600 each time. You know what? I think they used to cost 800 each. I'm wondering if they lowered the cost of the first one, but it's just going to be plus 800 uh, for each each one after that. And looking at system development stuff, the only resource that we see naturally around here is Red Sang, which is fine for us, but not great. I was really hoping we would uh, we would see like Jadonix or Blue Cat Mold again or something. They're really, really, really not producing a lot of manpower, and that is going to affect uh, our ships in combat because obviously. We are not going to be getting the full crew damage bonus. It's tough, man. It's tough to create manpower for the Vodiani. Our troops are good at fighting, but they are not exactly numerous. So where is this, uh... Man, the camera locks up real bad while the game is processing the end of the AI's turns. Ah, uh, what do you think? I mean, it's hard to know which one of these is going to... has the higher potential to yield something interesting. So we made it over to Hekka, and let's fight. So we, we would prefer to be at medium range. Right, both of our ships would prefer to be at medium range. So what, what are we looking at here from them? They are using bullet weapons. Okay. So actually, I like power to shields a lot. Gives us a good... Uh, it gives them very minimal damage at the beginning of the fight. The arc can just engage them from a considerable distance. And we're going to watch this first one, not because I think there's any chance of things going wrong, but because I'm amused by how much larger the arcs are <laughs> than most ships, and I just want to see that in action one time at the beginning here real quick. They're doing hard target, which is like a terrible battle plan for their weapons. I don't know why that would be the, the thing they choose. Look at it. Look at the scale difference. Look at these tiny, tiny little pirates. Where even are they? 
They're so small, they're hard to see. Obviously, we know how this is going to turn out. We don't have to... Don't have to slow roll this. Our weapons do little damage, their weapons do effectively no damage, and then we close to medium and all of a sudden we're doing a ton of damage. They are not... Initially, pirates are not well suited to long-range combat. So it is usually the case. Sometimes you'll see pirates um, using missile weapons instead, but in my experience, mostly they use bullet weapons at the beginning of the game. Do I want to pick off these guys with the arc? Now, I probably want to get this arc in place and constructing stuff around Nakos. We'll use our actual combat ships to deal with the, the assimilation quest. It shouldn't be a problem. What is this? Hold on now. Cravers. I'm guessing from uh, from the fact that this is happening, this is a free space uh, travel move. You don't stop in the middle of a wormhole. If there was a wormhole from Nos leading up, up there, they would have uh, made it all the way to Nos in a single move. Well, we can certainly attack them and just uh, try to siphon some essence out of their, uh, their ship crew. And... Sorry, when I say can, what I mean is will. We absolutely will do that. We have formally met the Cravers. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, interesting. Their scavenger has an advantage over our scavenger. Like, a pretty significant one, actually. Um, I would like to disengage. I feel like, I feel like I've made a tactical error here. We're bullet ship, they're a bullet ship. Yeah, we don't really have any way of, uh, of playing around this. And unfortunately, our other ship doesn't have any guns. So all it could possibly do is absorb bullets here. Let's disengage. I made a mistake. That was... So I got a little overzealous. That's just sort of our thing. Tell us. Tell us what you uh, I refuse. I refuse to stop attacking your ships. And we've discovered the Sisters of Mercy. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Uh, so, I think we're probably just going to go ahead and drink. I don't think they'll attack us, because, you know, we're a big, scary, major civilization. They, there could be reprisals, so they'll just let us drink for the moment. Uh, we're not going to be making any long-term friends over here, but that's fine. That's not what we're. That's not what we came over to do. All right, so get me a couple more gouges, and then I would like to add one rack to that fleet as well. So these things have uh, have the guardian trait, which means they tend to attract enemy fire. Just load you up with defensive modules. Actually, hold on. There is a there's a slot here that we could use for more uh, more drawing essence. Probably that's not a great idea though. Let's do this, I think. Uh, this gives us Better defenses against missile weapons, and it also gives us a weapon uh, a weapon type that is not the same as the rest of our ships, so if enemies tech against us with their defenses, these ships will still be dealing full damage. Yeah, that's fine. I like that. Do we want to do missiles instead? Probably not. We're seeing a lot of enemies that have bullet weapons right now. The missiles are notoriously terrible in that situation. So we'll build one of those as well. In fact, make that next. All right, and our science is coming along. We're getting there. Let's have these ships just join up over here, I guess. We got attacked by random pirate vessel. Seems like maybe not a great play on his part. Did he do any damage at all? Not really. We gained a, a single point of essence. Listen, every little bit helps. Ah, yes, and an emissary from the Academy has arrived. So if you've been paying attention to the plot stuff the last game... Uh, in the last couple of games, you may have noticed that uh, the the heretic from our faction quest is named Isyander, which is the same as the name of the Vudyani her the Vudyani fanatic who runs the academy. Uh, so obviously, that's what the story is there. Uh, the probe micro factory is just not any good. I'm gonna yeah, scavenge ramp scoop. I know that we we make this same choice all the time. It's just like, why would you want a probe micro factory? <laughs> You could, you could, in the micro factories, the slot that you would put the micro factory in, instead, just install another probe module. 
and then also you can have the ram scoot. All right, so we're just going to anchor right here, take over Nakos, immediately have effectively three points of population working, two temperate fertile planets, which means that Xeno Industrial Infrastructure is bananas here. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty damn good start. We're going to get another, uh, another arc up soon, and then we're going to take over Hekka. What are the planets around Hekka that they're Ash and Savannah? We don't have the ability to work Savannah. Oh, well, it's Baryonic Shielding gets that done, so. By the time we have that third arc, we will be able to use that planet. And we now have two gouges together. I think we're going to, um, we're going to combine all these ships up into a fleet and then go fight those pirates. And then we got to go fight these pirates for our faction quest. Hey, here's a question. Who do we want in the second slot in our government? Obviously, the militarists give us some some useful stuff, and like the Spoils of War Act is pretty good. Right now, the Industrialist Party is on the way to holding the secondary slot. Um, the Mineral Misers Act is fine. Fleet Fortitude is actually pretty good. And Work Not Shirk is very, very good, but that's like a, a very late game concern. Uh, the Scientist Party would not be bad. We don't have enough influence to, to put too much pressure on the election, so we probably here will not actually be able to stop the Industrialists from becoming our second party. But I'm wondering, like, in a long-term sense, if that's how we want to keep things going. Honestly, it might be. The early ecologist laws aren't very good for us. Power to the people does nothing for us. Actually, yeah, all of the ecologist stuff is really bad. So Militarist, Industrialist, and Religious are the uh, the three parties that we're really looking at here. I'm going to go ahead and toss in my support behind these guys, I guess. Wow, polls were bad. They did not get even one vote. The Pacifist Party and the, uh, the Militarist Party both tied at one vote. And unfortunately, the game picked the wrong one to go into our government. So, I guess let's go to here. Lonica was successfully hacked. We don't actually need to improve our image with them anymore. We could just hack their economy, I suppose. Increase their yield by 75% for normal resources and 50% for... Yeah, that's okay. We could create a back door there as well, but I don't know that that's really beneficial to us. And then from there, we should probably just hack pirate bases, right? Let's run a hack to here. We're going to deal with the pirate base at NOS through uh, through violence, obviously. At least that's the plan. So that one shouldn't be around long enough to matter. Alright, so we're going to set up a blockade at Lonica. We'll catch them when they move back over the... Uh... Oh! Never mind, they're going to knock us. Alright, well, turn around as quickly as you can. I think we'll... Uh, maybe we will not get there in time. A huge asteroid approaching your systems has turned out to be a fragment of an ancient planet that burst ages ago. Well, in the situation we're in right now, where we're producing relatively small amounts of dust and influence and science, I think it's pretty hard not to take the free technology here. Our approval level is 64%, so... Actually, the plus 10 approval on this option would take us to happy for 10 turns. That is something. But also, free technology. So what did we get? Uh, no, we had already researched that manually. Oh, I think it gave us machine bacteria. So the ability to get better probe modules and then also to in inhabit step worlds... Not awesome. I mean, it's fine. Uh, let's grab Graviton Shielded Laboratories. This is a great, a great fast boost to science and also lets us colonize some more worlds that we were looking at. So here it's hot stuff. There it's hot stuff. This is an Arctic world. What about Perseus? What's the world we can't colonize here? A toxic world. Okay, that's, that's pretty far outside of our current research uh, purview. 
Well, whatever, it's fine. And we have learned to see more uh, more types of curiosities. Uh, we should be paying a little bit more attention to the legendary deeds that we're unlocking. So, first to explore 50% of the galaxy gets 75 Jade Onyx. Uh, this thing is now buildable, which is pretty good. Especially if you build it early, although it is expensive. We were not able to get Creator of Wealth. And we can see one more over here. Oh yes, this, this wonder is available. Will we go for it? I don't know. Actually, you know what? Let me research this really quickly first. We're in a place now where we could actually build the embassy, and also I want that extra law slot. We have enough influence income that we can take advantage of it. Okay, those pirates don't move very fast, it looks like. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it back there in time to catch them. I'm relatively certain. That's just a random pirate vessel, but it's headed away. You know, I almost never buy ships on the marketplace. That's probably a thing that we could do some games. Not this game, obviously. And then we also should probably um, retrofit that arc. I forgot, we probably want to pull the engine, place it with one of those. Oof, 600 dust for that? Well, man, that's expensive. I think we want it, the essence is really important, but... Yeah. Very expensive. Uh... Why have we stopped siphoning? Never stop siphoning. That was weird. Okay. Let's try to get these Harishims uh, converted to our religion before the end of the episode. So I don't I don't actually think these guys are even gonna make it to Nakos next turn. I think we have a little bit of time. Okay, so this thing's happened, there's some media attention around a big, fancy, stellar event, and plus 20 approval on all, on all of our systems is a welcome thing, even though it's increasing our, our uh, what do you call it, even though it's increasing our upkeep costs, I think we probably are gaining dust on this just from having jumped up to loyal. And this would be a good time to build some supermarkets. You know, obviously we have other stuff going on. But supermarkets are good. And then while we're at Nakos here, we can uh, and scout this uh, this curiosity that we've discovered as well. What have we found here on Nakos Four? Why it turns out it's not a resource. It was just 150 dust. That's not actually that impressive. Oh, well. Okay, the Cravers are threatening us. Good thing we started building up a military already. We've also unlocked ourselves another law slot here. So, admit and improve is plus experience on ships and heroes. You know, honestly, that might be pretty good for us. We could also grab the Cram Exam Act for a while. It's pretty minor change, all told. Six science per turn when we're at 215 or 214. Well, hold on. How's it worded? Okay, it's worded as per population on planets, while the approval loss is per population on systems. So, like, on our home system, this is going to be minus two approval, but plus nine, um, plus nine science, if I'm understanding this right. So we're looking at 214 total science and 84% on both of these. This is actually pretty good here. If it works the way it looks like it should. Okay, no, it did reduce our, um... It did reduce our approval three times in each system. For the three effective population. It's still pretty good, though. It's not, it's not taking us... It's not changing our quantum of approval, so... I'll take it. I guess we should just send this other probe off somewhere, right? Into the dark and see if there's anything out there. 
pick this direction. No reason not to. Let's launch an attack on these guys. This should be a pretty easy win. Uh, what, are their, what are their weapon systems? Oh, they're using missile weapons. Okay. That does change things a little bit. We might want to go... So they're going to probably pick a long-range battle plan. Honestly, it might be worth taking Turtle just to try to close up and make their weapons ineffective. Because our weapons are still at 50% at that range. Yeah, I think I like that. We'll keep the leecher off to the side. Let's um let's actually watch what happens here. So they don't they don't have enough um they don't have enough command points in their fleet to uh, be able to use their second flotilla. So that's a damage bonus for us, remember. This should be pretty favorable. I'm just curious what the damage is actually going to look like. Oof, those missile volleys hit really hard. And we are not going to kill any of their ships before the second volley is fired. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to rebuild the fleet a little bit. These guys proved to be a little tougher than I was expecting. Also, look at the size of that chunk of space ice. With one ship down, the volleys are a little softer. We're still going to lose this, though. That is a real shame. We're going to get a fair amount of uh, essence out of this battle. Because we do have a whole bunch of... Um... Oh, that's right. We only have one real combat ship in this flotilla. So, <laughs> it's going to take a minute here. Oh, I forgot the scout has bullets. You know what, if we put the scout in the middle flotilla, there's a pretty good chance that we would have, uh, we would have reduced a lot of the damage. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was an error on my part. Alright. We did it. We destroyed the mercenary fleet. We got their Hyperium. Thieves won't be troubling these Harashams again. And so the Harashams are now converted. You can see they are tithing essence to us all the time. They will no longer, uh, offer quests to other factions. And we have the ability to pay a small amount of influence to forcibly remove them from the system. Where do they go? Not really my problem, it turns out. Uh, in addition, now that they are... Uh, let me pull you. Now that they're converted, and they consider us to be... I don't know, I don't know if full deities, but at least deity adjacent. We can send ships over and harvest from them, and they will, they will allow it gladly. They will exalt in it. Alright, so we have one bad pirate ship that we'll kill at the beginning of next turn with this fleet, and then we'll send them... I don't know. My plan was to go take uh, take Nos down. It's going to be a little harder without the full manpower of the fleet. I guess we really only have to rebuild a little bit, though. Um, let's build the Academy Embassy here first. Uh, is that a thing I want to do? It is not cheap. But I do want to get this up, right? Like I want to I wanna start accumulating new heroes as quickly as possible. And you don't get them very quickly, passively. Uh, we could also run this out. It would only affect the one the one effective point of population very much. It's probably not worth doing. Yeah, I guess let's get on this. Do we, do we want to build one of these wonders? We do have the resources. I mean, science and dust are great, obviously. At this point in the game, 16 turns worth of industry is, is a very significant cost to pay. I guess, get me another ship. We'll rebuild from our losses a little bit. We'll figure uh, figure that all out afterward. The rack does have its action point. We could disengage the rack from the fleet and attack here, but I think it's probably smarter to just do this with all three of the ships at the same time. And this guy, oh, he fled. All right, well, that's annoying. I was mashing that button as fast as I could. Uh, just go ahead and start start siphoning. And so you can see there's no longer any any effect from the siphoning there. They're overjoyed to be set upon by what they see as their superiors. 
It's a terrifying relationship. <laughs> like I might have mentioned at the beginning. Hard to feel good about it. So next turn we're going to be able to build another arc. We should probably modify the arc design to put the engines back. You know what? If this arc's only going to Hekka, it's probably not necessary. So yeah, let's uh, let's get that second arc in the build queue and then we'll we'll stop here. Alright, this is a thing that's going to happen from time to time. Pirates are going to show up and they're going to try to shoot our arcs to death. And unfortunately, we're using the same kinds of weapons they are. It's not totally ideal, but we have a huge, huge health advantage. Yeah, they barely even made a dent. You are absolutely grabbing optimal operations, expert. I wonder, though how long we should wait to, um... Oh, did those pirates already bail? You know what? I was supposed to be paying attention over here. Alright, well, I wonder how long we should wait to get Varb back out in the air. Might be a good idea to do that reassign relatively quickly. I mean, I guess we gotta get the, um... We gotta get these systems built up, though. Anyway... Uh, we're certainly not exactly killing it on population or anything, but we are we are certainly doing a good job on essence, or at least we are whenever we're allowed to continue to gathering it. I'm not sure why our ships are stopping all the time. Maybe they stop pulling in essence whenever they see an enemy or something, so that we know that a we know that a pirate ship went through this system this turn. Maybe that's what turned it off. I don't know. Whatever. But that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I think this faction is really intriguing. I've, I've said a bunch of times, I think one of the greatest strengths of the Endless Games is how different the factions are from one another. And hopefully this series will prove that that, <laughs> prove that, that is not a nonsensical thing to say over and over and over again. So, come back next time, tomorrow, to see what we make of this and how exactly we're going to deal with the adjacent garden. And we'll see you then.